Coming up on Mountain News at 6, we hear from folks in the community about Brandon Robinson's decision to retire. And a new business is now open in Middlesboro. We hear from local officials about what they hope it will do for the area just ahead. And rain will continue for Friday and this weekend. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Yesterday, WYMT's chief forecaster announced his retirement. A day we never dreamed would come so soon, but also a day that we celebrate with him. And the new adventures ahead. Not only has Brandon made our station better, he has made our region better. And I had the honor of sitting down with some of the people who know him well and have had the honor of experiencing his impact not only on their lives, but the thousands of viewers who watch him each day. I'm just I'm thankful that he's my friend um, and I'm I'm thankful that um, that the mountains have got to know Brandon Robinson as the community reflects on their roughly 17 years of watching Brandon Robinson on air. Harlan County Judge Executive, former colleague and as he is the kind of person everyone looks to not only for the latest forecast, but as a light that shines bright in the mountains. He is Eastern Kentucky through and through. Uh, we talk oftentimes about the grit of mountain people and their work ethic and their fiber, and their character. Uh, Brandon Robinson exemplifies the very fiber of mountain people. His demeanor on air through any situation was the outward display of his inward love and care for his mountain people. One viewer and friend, Johnny Nicholson, says he always goes back to the night of July 28th, 2022. If anybody has ever had a chance to look at his dedication that evening, I mean, yes, he could have went home, his home was in danger, but he stayed, uh, stayed, the, stayed the course as it may be, and uh, he made sure everyone was protected and got the information that they could need. We finally have power back in downtown Whitesburg. <clears throat> So you're getting a chance to see the, de the devastation firsthand for the first time uh, since earlier. Being known as a weatherman that will be hard to replace. He has a knack for making everyone that he meets feel welcome. He cares about the people that live in these mountains. And that has been uh, very evident in the things that he has done that have not been on air. From his time at festivals to community events and beyond. Everybody that meets Brandon in person loves him. They love him on TV, but in person you love him even more. He always loved the parades, the Christmas parade, whatever parade was going on, especially if Snoopy was in there. He always loved parades, and, and it's just been great having him uh, represent us on WYMT all these years. Brandon is always so positive and so loving and giving. You just feel like he's a big teddy bear and you just want to hug on him all the time. But he's just that kind of person that you want to be friends with. And that's easy for him because he treats everyone like a friend. Many have said through the years on their screens, he has become more like family, someone they could count on, even drink their morning coffee with. I think we're all better people because we've been around Brandon, WYMT. Uh, that was Brandon's goal, uh, was to go there, and uh, he got that opportunity, and he and he and he, he did it very well, uh, and he's uh, certainly uh, big shoes to fill. Uh, he is definitely a legend uh, on that station. That that uh, people uh, love him and revere him, and uh, uh, so we'll certainly miss not seeing him on there. Uh, but but I'm thankful that he's going to have the opportunity to retire and do what he wants to do. And we sure are blessed here at WIMT to say we work with Brandon. His official last day is not until June 30th, and we have already made him promise that he will come back to the station and visit. And I and everyone else will miss him on air and in this studio. And we will continue to celebrate Brandon's time at WIMT. And with that, we would like you to share your photos with us. 
If you have any photos of you and Brandon at festivals, public appearances, or any other event, we encourage you to share those photos with us at WIMT.com. Just look for our web story or scan the QR code on your screen. Well, gloomy and wet weather continues on this Wednesday evening up on first alert pinpoint Doppler. We are tracking some light to moderate showers. Some good news, nothing too heavy, but if you have your downpours pushing through parts of southwest Virginia, close to Norton, also Wise and Wise County, moving through parts of Buchanan, also Dickinson County as well, and some more light to moderate showers close to Prestonsburg over in Floyd County, also for southern Martin County, also in places in Rowan County, pushing into Elliott County as well, and over far southern Kentucky. Kentucky, close to Middlesbrough over in Bell County. A few light showers also close to I-75 in Whitley County at this hour. A live look from soggy UVA wise over in southwest Virginia down to 59 degrees as showers continue on this Wednesday. And for most of us, we're in the upper 60s to lower 70s, up to 71 for Jackson and 72 over in Manchester at this hour. We are tracking a slow drying trend to go into tonight. A small chance of a few passing showers, maybe a few sprinkles, but for most, we are drying out tonight. Also watching out for some areas of dense fog to wake up on your Wednesday or on your Thursday as lows are back in the upper 50s to lower 60s by Wednesday night. A little bit of a break tomorrow, then higher rain chances by Friday and this weekend. More details on that forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Olivia. All right, Cameron, thank you. A Floyd County woman has been indicted on procuring or promoting a minor by electronic means. 20 year old Darian Huff was indicted by a Floyd County grand jury last week after a lengthy investigation in which forensic evidence was obtained from electronic devices along with other information. Huff turned herself into the Floyd County Sheriff's Office. In a statement from the Sheriff's Office, Huff was employed by Floyd County Schools at the time of the investigation. A jury returned to court for day three of court proceedings in a Leslie County murder today. Police say the defendant, Jeremy Lewis, is a former Leslie County Sheriff's Officer. Lewis is accused of killing Tyler North in 2018 in Leslie County, but his trial is taking place in Clay County. Today, Lewis told members of the jury what he says happened in 2018. Lewis is charged with murder, tampering with physical evidence, and abuse of a corpse. Four people have been arrested in connection with a stolen truck case out of Laurel County. 45-year-old Terry Brandon Browning, 36-year-old Margie Bowling, 40-year-old Bridget Murray, and 45-year-old Stephen Couch were arrested at a home near Philpot Road. Police made the arrest after they received information regarding the whereabouts of a 1988 Chevy pickup truck. Police were able to recover the stolen truck. And we also have an update regarding a story we first told you about on Monday. The four dogs that were captured after a child was attacked in Whitley have been put down. The dog's bodies were taken to Frankfurt for further testing. The attack happened at a home on Johnny Hollow Road in Rockholds. The boy had to be flown to a hospital. According to officials, the injured child is still recovering and is stable. More than one and a half million dollars in funding has been approved to support workforce development in the Commonwealth. Governor Andy Bashir made the announcement this morning. The funding approved through the Bluegrass State Skills Corporation will be used to assist with training and development of nearly 5,000 Kentuckians. This will include nearly 300 trainees at Cumberland Cooperage in East Bernstadt in Laurel County. And a new Hobby Lobby location is crafting support from folks across the mountains. WIMT's Madison Carmouche has more from Middlesboro on the new edition. With the opening of a new Hobby Lobby, Middlesboro Mayor Boone Bowling says he hopes it will attract more businesses to the area. Usually you see several stores that follow a department store like this so you know, we we don't have any confirmation of course but you know our, our hope is that we see three or four other stores continue to add to this on what Hobby Lobby's done. Before the new location started checking out customers on Monday they traveled more than one hour to get their crafting needs. Yes it's very excited because we're used to going to Morristown or the one in Sevierville and so we're excited for it to be here in Millsboro. 
and I do quilting, uh, make quilt tops, and so material section is really nice. I'm really excited about all them different materials. The economic boom of shoppers also made room for the more than 1,500 applicants who applied to work at the store. When it came for the process of setting the store up, um, I was really excited because I live about 45 minutes to an hour away from here, so I commuted to work. Hobby Lobby in Middlesboro is not just serving one community, but improving the quality of life in the tri-state area. Now this is a true stepping stone, and you know, Middles. It, when you think about Middlesboro, Middlesboro is so much bigger than just our population of 9,303. You know, it goes, it's bigger than our county, but you know, this tri-state area, I feel like is right now starting to really work together. Sparking creativity while staying close to home. In Middlesboro, Madison Carmouche, WIMT Mountain News. Store officials say the new store profits have been comparable to the larger stores in the area already. Many Kentucky school districts will release for summer vacation over the next few days, and with that comes challenges for some. Pulaski County's last day of school is Friday. The director of the local food bank says as soon as the school year ends, they will see a hike in need as parents look to provide for weekly meals they have not had to provide in months. God's Food Pantry has experienced some bare shelves by the time the new school year starts, but this year there is optimism. And for us, that canned food drive generated almost 14,000 cans of food. So um, we're hoping that our shelves are still going to have something on it, even as the kids are going back to school, that we've got that availability of product. Pulaski County Schools will have a summer feeding program starting June 3rd, which will provide several meals a day for kids. Projects are on display in Pikeville, showcasing the work and research of students from all around the region. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more from the University of Pikeville. He put in here, though no one can go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. The Cedar Innovation and Entrepreneurship Program is hosting a future-focused fair. It's to learn about our region, about what's possible for our region, and um, having a greater appreciation from the, for the area. With more than 200 student projects on display at the University of Pikeville, imagining the future of the region's workforce. I think this gives uh, students the opportunity to explore careers, explore ideas, to explore possibilities beyond traditional uh, types of careers for our area. From agriculture to art, the projects cover the spectrum of educational subjects while also correlating to the seven pillars of shaping our Appalachian region's blueprint for the future of Appalachia. And they are the future of this area, and to see them already focusing on so many wonderful things uh, here and things that are coming in the future uh, is exciting. Organizers say the dreams and drive of the students makes the program a success. We are in a time when this area is really growing, expanding, and, uh, and our students are aware of that and they are going to be part of that expansion. Showing them the region's story and letting them write the next chapter. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The fair will end tomorrow night with an open house and reception, hoping to highlight the projects and the program. We're tracking some more spotty showers as we go into this evening, but some drier air is not far away. Your forecast coming up after this break.